All right, and now I am back and I have a memory card. So I have a 16 uh, gigabyte SDHC card from SanDisk. This is one of their extreme cards, which boasts up to 30 megabytes per second in terms of speed. Uh, but if you're interested, um, check out the video description. I'll put a link to a review that I did that actually covers the uh, SanDisk card and talks about um, the differences in speed versus the SanDisk card versus something like a, a Patriot card or something that is less than half the price and actually ends up offering pretty much identical performance. So anyway, here we go. So here is the camera. I'm gonna put this back over here. So, as I mentioned earlier, there's a few different things, right? So there's something called, uh, this is the guide mode, and then there's different ways of kind of um, basically telling the camera what you want to take a picture of. So for instance, I say, okay, I want to take a, I want to take a picture of like a close-up. Okay, so the camera is now in close-up mode. Use it for close-ups of flowers and other small objects. So now it's actually in macro mode, so I'll say, okay, start shooting, and Oh, that's cool. It gives me the option of using the viewfinder or losing, using live view or shooting movies. So I'm going to say live view. So now it's going to give me the camera here. And I can uh, zoom in a little bit. I can compose. And then boom. Now, uh, it fired the flash, which is a little bit weird for being up close, but there you have it, there's there's the picture. And as you can tell by the little icon there, it was actually in macro mode. Now, uh, of course, a lot of this stuff is gonna vary depending on the type of lens that you have, because uh, the lens, Lenses have minimum focusing distances, and on some lenses, uh, you'd never be able to focus on anything this close. So uh, this 18 to 55 much must, must have a decent, um, you know, uh, minimum minimum foc focusing distance, and so uh, yeah, that that will depend. So that's uh, that's the guide mode. That's one of the other interesting things. Uh, I, so I mentioned D movie. Actually, let me just take it out of guide mode here. We'll just put it back over to full auto. So there is it. Now, you see this big red button here? Boom! You press it. And it should be, oh, actually I take it back. If you're in live mode, like I am right now, and you press the button, you will, you will immediately get um, the automatic uh, 1080p video, right? So it's actually gonna start to uh, shoot shoot the video. Now, I, won't, I don't think I'm really gonna be able to, to necessarily um, you know, show this, but it, ha it, ha it has auto focusing. Now that's probably gonna be too close. So, but like if I move it over there and I follow it, that's uh, that's now in focus. I know this is kind of hard to see <laughs> on the camera. If I move it there, it's, it's now in focus. Yeah, boy, this is really hard to demo. Anyway, the big deal uh, about the D3100, and in fact, uh, essentially probably every Nikon camera that's gonna be coming out from now on, so the D7000 has this feature, uh, and the D3100 is the very first camera to have it, is the continual autofocus during video. I can't tell you how important this is because with the D5000, I love the quality of the video that I shot with it, but I did not love the whole uh, manually focusing thing, you know, so I, I, I was continually having to um, refocus in order to keep things in focus, which frankly, uh, it sucked. It wasn't something that I was really expecting it would be difficult, but it turns out it is. So this has that feature. Now, how well will it work? How practical is it? Uh, I'm not too sure. I'm gonna, of course, have to do a full review and uh, use this camera, but like I said, since I purchased it, I'm gonna be checking that out. So it has the live view mode with the scene selector, which is another feature that Nikon um, mentions here. And so I don't, I don't know, I don't know if there's anything else in here that's kind of interesting with this sort of uh, like. So I click here to go to live mode, and then let's say I, I press and hold there. Okay, that's pretty interesting. So it it automatically when I was pressing and holding. It automatically, if you can see there, the little icon for macro. So the scene mode is essentially smart enough to say, "Hey, it looks like you're taking a picture of something, you know, up close. Um, we're gonna put you. We're gonna automatically put you in uh, macro mode." So that's actually pretty cool. And so again, that wasn't even guide mode. That's just me going into live view and then sort of t taking a picture of something. I don't know if I can uh, take a picture of something over here, and we'll see what it we'll see what it kind of does there. A little bit hard to show you. Uh, yeah, there's an award-winning picture. Sweet. All right, now uh, the screen. I mentioned the screen looks bigger, so it is. It's a three-inch screen, uh, and it's a high-resolution screen. They don't have the specs here. I'm pretty sure that it's 920,000 pixels. That seems to be kind of the standard Nikon screen that they're using now. Um, 
I don't know if this will show up in live view or actually no, you know what, I, I, I probably have to go into the menu system, but it has um, 11, auto, 11 point autofocus system and that's a big improvement because I think if memory serves, the D3000 only had something like a, uh, I want to say it's like like a, like a three-way <laughs> uh, um, three autofocus, or three autofocus points, essentially. So that obviously is a really, uh, a really, really big change. So I'm just going through the menu system here. Uh, it's probably going to, yeah, so autofocus. Okay, yeah, so, oh wait, it's not. Okay, so if I go in here into viewfinder. Uh, no, you know what? I bet you have to go into live view, and then I have to go into the menu system, and then I go into autofocus. Hmm, this option is not available with the current settings. So, I'll switch here over to aperture priority, which is the A. I'll go back into menu, I'll go back into here, I'll go back into live view, and then here we go. Now I have face priority, uh, wide area, normal subject area, or subject tracking. That's actually, uh, I think, another new feature for this camera is the 3D tracking. I have that feature on my Nikon D300, and what it means is that when you lock onto a subject, so let's say there's a, uh, a woman in a red shirt, and uh, you lock onto her with, with the camera, and you press and hold, and then she moves, the focal point should actually track her. It works quite well on my D300, I've used it extensively. Assuming that this thing does just as good of a job, which I'm pretty sure it will because of that x 2 processor, um, you have something that's actually really, really interesting here. Now, I also have the dynamic autofocus here, so I'm gonna do this, and then, I don't know if it's gonna let me, oh, see, check that out. See, look, I can actually, I can actually move the autofocus point um, around. With, with, that's actually pretty cool. So it's not actually just a, n a number of uh, small points. It's actually kind of uh, this little box that you can move around. Pretty cool. Worth noting, up here you see that there's a limit of actually 10 minutes on, on the video clip. So I believe that that's, that is a hard limit of 10 minutes. Um, I don't think that there's any, I don't think that there's any options in terms of um, the uh, the movie settings like in terms of the codec or the quality so you have different resolutions right so i can do 24 frames per second at 1920 i can do 30 frames per second at a few different um uh 720p at a few different frame rates and then i also can do uh 640 by 424 at 24 frames per second so this is sort of like web resolution video, but I would never use it. I would always shoot in 1080p and then basically just uh, downscale. So let's talk a little bit about some of the other, um, the hardware here. So as you can see here, I have a manual switch. Um, so S is just a single shot mode. This uh, mode here is uh, the burst mode. So. Uh, I believe this camera does um, three frames per second or four frames per second. I don't have it on the spec sheet in front of me, which is a bit uh, silly that Nikon didn't have it on this one that I printed out, but there you go. We have uh, self timer mode, and then we also have a quiet shutter mode. And quiet shutter is kind of interesting. So I don't know how well this is going to turn, this is going to show up, but let's let's just try. So here's regular shutter. Oops, hold on a second here. Okay, regular shutter. It's having a hard time focusing. So let's just switch over to full auto and it should focus easier. So here's regular shutter. Okay, and then now I'm gonna move it over to quiet shutter. So that's quiet shutter. Hmm, you know, not really that big of a difference, eh? Although I guess, you know, Quieter shutter is maybe a better name for it, but there you go. Uh, and active D lighting, I don't really ever use that, but it does have it. It has it has a wide variety of uh, picture controls. You know, so if if you if you're shooting in full auto and you want to actually adjust how your images are looking. Um, there's a lot of different retouching, so you can correct red eye on the camera, you can trim uh, videos, you can shoot monochrome, you know, black and white sepia or cyanotype. Um, I really do not recommend shooting in monochrome. You take your pictures in color and then on your computer you do the conversion. And the reason why is really simple. If you ever shot uh, a picture and you wished it was in color, well, if you if you shot that sucker in monochrome, there's no going back. So yeah, I really don't want to, really don't recommend that. There's different filter effects, which is kind of interesting. You, if you want to warm, you know, uh, emulate a, uh, you know, like a, a warming filter, like a, a Hoya, you know, or something like that. 
um, I forget the number, like 54B or something like that. Color balance, you can do some different um, adjustments there. This looks like you can adjust the color balance um, of different images. So if I want to adjust the color balance here, yeah, so I, if I want to uh, say move that you know, and, and make it make it a little bit warmer, although that looks kind of gross, looks kind of yellow. But yeah, if I want to make it yellow, boom, there you go. You can do it that way. Uh, something called small picture. Uh, it looks like this, yeah, so this is actually resizing uh, directly on the camera. Again, might be kind of cool for some people. I don't know that I would ever really do it. There's a quick retouch um, function. Anyway, lots and lots of things here for me to explore in my video, and this is just trying to give you an, an idea of everything that this camera offers, and as you can tell, it offers uh, a lot. Now, it does have, um, it has something called dual integrated dust reduction system. That essentially is just um, a dust reduction system. It probably does like a vibration on the sensor, and it's probably, uh, you know, Know, something to do with the airflow on the camera and then the last bullet point I have here from Nikon is lightweight body and superior ergonomics so yeah definitely a lightweight body it's definitely quite small this thing though um, it really depends on, on how you hold it you know some people will, will kind of hold it like this you know meaning their fingers on the shutter which is where you're doing when you're holding it and then your three fingers are here but depending on the size of your hands you know I tend to even when I'm holding it like this I notice that my pinky finger tends to slide down below the camera and so that's why I typically typically like having a battery grip on a lot of the cameras that I use like my like my my uh, my d300 so again um, that may be an issue for some people just the size but you know on, on the other hand it is a really nice small uh, lightweight digital SLR and if you're looking for something that's you know gonna be quite portable you can put you know like a pancake lens on here or a smaller prime you end up with actually a really small um, package so that has been a rather lengthy overview of the Nikon D3100 with the 18 to 55 lens my name is Jason Dunn this has been a video um, for digital home thoughts my website Post a comment, uh, give this video you know, a thumbs up if you like it, subscribe to our channel, uh, and again, if I can ask, if you're interested in purchasing this camera, check out the video description and you can find a buy link in there to Amazon, and if you purchase it through that link, you're helping me out and you're helping to support me to do these types of videos. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks a lot.